Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kaladi and today we have Brittany Nicole on the show. Welcome Brittany, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, it. Uh, you're most welcome. So Brittany, not too long ago, you were in a hospital bed on a chemotherapy and nearly died. What was going on with you at that point in your life? I have lupus, so I, I mean, I've been sick for most of my life. And at that point, um, the lupus was really, really bad. And that's how they treat it is with chemo. Um, and I was on 11 different medications and um, I my lungs were affected really bad. So I've had pneumonia seven times in the last two years. And um, whenever I was in the hospital, the pneumonia had like taken over everything. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that was the extent of it really. Like I just, I didn't think I was going to make it out of there. You wrote to me about a particular moment and uh, epiphany you had that led you to say enough is enough. Tell me about that moment. When I was in the hospital, um, my family, you know, would come in and visit me and, um, I, well, I had this, I want to say it was a near death experience. I, um, I woke up and I saw my little brothers crying and they were looking at me in the bed. And the next thing I know, I'm standing next to them. Um, and I'm, I'm looking down at my body <clears throat> and they're crying and I'm trying to get their attention and, they couldn't hear me and they were trying to wake me up and I wasn't moving. I wasn't waking up at all. And at that point I realized I was like, am I dead? What is going on? And I saw this, the next thing I know I'm, I'm in this field and there were like clouds everywhere. And there was this little, this is the crazy story. There was this little child and um, she was holding my hand and her laughter Her laughter made me feel at peace and um, we're running through this field and I'm like, I have to go back. I have, I have to be there for my brothers. I didn't do what I wanted to do in this life. And she's like, it's okay. You're with me now. And we're going through all these different mazes and all these different rides. And I'm like, I need to go back home. And she looks at me and she smiles and she says, this is your home. And I started crying. I just, I remember my, my brothers, I had to go back for my brothers and she has, she takes my hand and she's leading me through this tunnel full of water and I can't swim. So I was like, I can't swim. And she's like, just trust me. And she's like, have faith. And I grabbed her hand and then I went, I jumped through this tunnel. And the next thing I know I wake up and I'm in my body and I'm looking at my brother and he's crying. And um, at that point I realized, you know, that they needed me and I needed them. And I was going to be a better role model. I was going to be a better sister, a better daughter, a better friend. And I was going to do it. I was going to, if I got out of that hospital, I was going to go and do what I wanted. And I was going to help people and I was going to help inspire them and just lift them up, I guess. <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you so much for sharing. And you decided not only to change your life, but also the lives of others. Why is helping others so important for you today? I feel God gives his, his battles to the strongest warriors. And I know that since I went through that, I know that there are other people that are going through that. And I got out of the darkness and there's other people that are still in the darkness. And I feel that I need to help them get out of the darkness because I didn't start living my life until a year and a half ago. <laughs> so I feel that others need to believe in themselves and I believe in them. So <laughs> it's not necessarily related to fitness either, is it? No, it's, it's everything in life. If you want to be a doctor, be a doctor. If you want to be an Olympian, be an Olympian, a better teacher, whatever it may be. <laughs> So it's about enabling people to make the most of their lives and you make every single day count. How do you approach that personally? Whenever I feel that I'm getting, I'm getting run down or I'm stressed out or I can't go any longer, I just remember being in the hospital and I would look out the window and there would be birds and people walking and I just wanted so much to be out there. And then I would look down at me and there's 
there's tubes everywhere. And then the nurses would come in and take my blood and there'd be dried blood on my arm. And I just, I think about that moment when my freedom was taken away and that's what gets me through everything. And I'm just like, I know that Philippians 4.13 actually, um, you know, Christ giving you the strength, that is what gets me through everything. Because I know I wouldn't be here without him and his faith. So Back then, you felt you had never done anything to be proud of. If you had to choose one thing, what are you most proud of today? Well, my little brother, the one that was crying when I woke up, he called me actually on Monday and we had a really heart to heart, like a serious conversation. And he told me, you know, Britt, I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of everything that you have done. And he's like, you're inspirational and, and you inspire me and I want to be better because of you. And at that moment, that's, that was the most amazing feeling. He also sent me a frightening picture of pharmacy worth of medication that you decided to throw out. Were you scared to do so? Actually, I was. I was terrified, but I um, I realized that I was using that as a crutch, and I didn't want to, if I was having a bad day, I didn't want to go back and get back on it. So I figured, you know what? God's got me this far at this point, so the worst I can do is throw this out, and if I need it, I'll end up back in the hospital. Nothing new, right? So I just kind of jumped. <laughs> And that decision led uh, to you becoming a better person in many areas of your life, going from a medical patient in a hospital bed to a fitness athlete in a major competition, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's exciting. It's a dream. It's, I don't feel like this is my life right now. <laughs> ah, and you do such, such a great job, uh, Brittany. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't always easy. Tell me about the in-between. What are some obstacles you've had to overcome and how did you find the strength to keep going? Living with lupus, it's not, it doesn't go away. It's always there. And, and there would be times in my prep where I wouldn't be able to walk. I would wake up in the morning and I would not be able to get out of bed. There was one time where I, I, I had a dog and he was he was the most amazing thing in my life. And, um, I woke up and, you know, I needed to take him out. Well, I couldn't walk at all. And, um, I just remember crawling out of bed and moving inch by inch to get to the front door. And it took me two and a half hours to get to my front door going maybe 800 feet. It wasn't far. Okay. Maybe it was smaller than that, <laughs> but, um, and I let him out and, I remember I was worried that I didn't know if he was going to come back or not. And I knew that I couldn't get up to go get him and I didn't have any family here and I didn't have my phone to call anyone. And he comes back up after doing his business and he sat there with me the whole time. And I laid there for two days and then, you know, I, I finally started getting up and getting moving, but the flare ups like that happen all the time. And when I can walk, you better believe I will be doing what I can when I can. I would put on hats at the gym and um, because I would be crying and I didn't want anybody to see me crying. So I would just I would put my hat on and I would just continue to just do what I needed to do. And my mom and my other brother have lupus. And first, the journey was about me. It was about what I wanted to do. I wanted to prove something to people. And then it became about them. And then it became bigger and every time I would struggle, I would think of my mom and I would think of my brother. And I felt that if I continued in some way, I would be able to help them. And every rep I did was for them. And every hard time, I would just think about them. And that's that's what got me through is just thinking about how much it would help them to see me get through it, too, I guess. Kind of like fighting her battle for her. <laughs> And now you're preparing for another competition, the Nationals in Jersey in July. What do you love yes. most about competing? I love it because I feel that when I get on stage, I feel like I have told, I have told lupus, I have told everything that, you know what, you're not stopping me. I'm going to get up here. I'm going to do what I want. And I know that others want to do it too. And if I get up there, I'm, I'm a light 
for them. And I feel, I feel, I feel like a warrior kind of, <laughs> but it's just, it, it's, it's you versus you. It's you being better than you were before. And in my mind, there is no, I'm never going to be where I want to be. I'm always going to be pushing and bettering myself, no matter what it is, if it's education, if it's spiritually, if it's physically, um, and competing to me is is all of that. It's spiritual. It's emotional. It's it's hard, but it it's worth it. It's amazing. And the people that you meet, I just I oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for all of the opportunities and the people, and I love it. I love it absolutely. <laughs> If you look back at the period uh, at that period in 2013 and reflect on it, what do you feel has been the biggest lesson you've learned as a person? That you need to believe in yourself. Um, your mind is the most powerful thing ever. If you feed negativity, the ne negativity is going to grow. If you feed positive stuff, that's going to grow. And what you put in your mind is is what you are. It reflects everything. And if you believe in yourself, you can do anything that you want to do. And I think that's that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned because I still go back sometimes and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do that. I'm a little scared. And then I think, no, you can do this. And I do it. And it still surprises me. So I don't know. But that's the biggest lesson. <laughs> Right. And where can people go to learn more about you and connect with you online? I'm redoing my website. Um, I'm, I'm a coach for Team Alpha. And um, I will actually get you the update on that website because all that's still going through. And we're trying to figure out the names and all of that right now. Um, but I have a Facebook and I have an Instagram. So my Instagram is Brittany Nicole underscore physique. And my Facebook um Well, it's Facebook.com, Brittany, Nicole Bennett. I don't know. And then you'll see my fitness picture. I'm like, so. <laughs> right. I will also make sure to put your links below this video. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Is there anything you feel we've missed that you would like to talk about today? I'm honored to be here. So I, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, my mind's like, ah. I don't know. You know, just just believe in yourself and, and do what you want to do and go for your dreams and don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Cause I know that like, I'm, I'm a walking testimony that if, if you let things stop you, you're just going to be, you're going to be dead and to be alive, to do what you want to do. And it's the most amazing feeling in the world. And I'm just like, Like I said, I don't feel like this is my life. I'm just in shock with everything. That's, everything has changed so much. So, yeah, just grow positivity. Feed that. <laughs> It was great having you on the show, Brittany. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Miriam. You're awesome. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Miriam Kaladi. For more inspiration, check out our website at realtalkrealwomen.com.